Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, sorry for the other top introduction. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Very excited to get back into more Series 8 content today. Obviously it is the last week of Series 8 before the rules do update on the 1st, which I believe is this Saturday, uh, to Series 9, which is reverting back to Series 7. It's uh, all very confusing, but end point is we're going to be saying goodbye to the restricted Pokemon. They will no longer be usable after this week. And today's team, I'm very excited to play. It is a cool team uh, provided by Lava Lamp. And now all of their socials uh, are down in the description below. They do have a YouTube channel as well. Provide very good Pokemon content. So go over, give them a bit of support drop a sub and uh, check out their content and uh, the poker paste as well is down below with this team's details and if you want to uh, grab those details check it out and try it out on something like showdown hope you enjoyed today's episode we'll have a couple of games with the team we'll see how it functions and then we'll end up with a rental at the end like we normally do so as i say hope you enjoyed today's episode and without further ado friends let's get into our first match of today Okay, first up today, we have a team of Salamence, Mama Swine, Duskman Necrozma, Dusclops, Kangaskhan, and Tapu Fini. Wow, we've got some real odd picks in here that you never really see too much anymore uh, in Series 8, especially the Kangaskhan. Uh, but it, it is a useful Pokemon, you know, it has got the um, the ability with Scrappy to hit Ghost types with its Fake Out and things like that, which makes it a little bit more dynamic, especially to help the Trick Room set up with something like Dusclops or the Duskman Necrozma. Um, I feel like Zygarde's good here, but we've got to be very careful around specifically the, the Mamoswine and the Tapu Fini. Uh, but, I mean, Rillaboom comes in and helps out a bunch against those, right? It's whether or not we want to go maybe Lapras, get our screens up, and then get into, like an endgame with, with Zygarde. That could be an option as well. Um, but the problem doing that, I feel, is we'll probably not get our weakness policy procced on Lapras. Um, well, I mean, we we could go comfy, but it's just such an easy target for Dustman and Necrozma. Um, and getting those defense boosts up is pretty easy for it, right? But it may... Uh, if we go that, I think, yeah, it kind of locks us into four Pokemon where it's Lapras, Comfy, Rillaboom. And then I think we need Incineroar as well, just for the Intimidate cycle onto at least the Dustman and Necrozma. Um, we'll go with that. We'll leave the Zygote out for this one. Even though it makes a lot of sense to bring for the Dustman Necrozma. Um, I feel like Lapras with its weakness policy setup could be quite good in this one. Because it hits pretty much the majority of my opponent's team for like super effective damage, you know? Um, excluding like the Dustman Necrozma and the Dusclops. We are going to see Mamo. Big Mamo come out. Okay, well this is alright. Um, okay. So I think we go for the Resonance turn one into... Mm, do we? Do we? Or do we kind of hold off with the Resonance, get a rain up, and go after the Mama Swine, and go... Uh, Giga Drain, Giga Drain, Giga Drain, Giga, Giga, Giga Drain. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go after the Mama Swine. And we kind of want to put our Resonance up as late into our Dynamax turns as possible. So like turn three would be ideal. Um, even though it makes sense to do it now, it just gives us a bit longer in this match with the, the, the screen support up. And especially because we haven't got something like like clay on it, um, we kind of want to make sure that we've got those uh, turns as late as possible. We're not going to see the Mama Swine uh, max or anything. Which would make sense anyway in front of a Lapras. It would be kind of nuts to see that. We just see high horsepower come out into Comfy. And we'll maybe... Do we see the Trick Room set up? I don't know. I don't. I doubt it. I doubt the Trick Room gets set up. But you never know. The Dusclops is there for a reason. Um, Mama Swine, is that a Sash? It is a Sash. Okay, that, that, that works out well. Especially if the Trick Room goes up here. Because it means that we've got an extra turn where my opponent's not getting full use out of these Trick Room turns. Now, Dusclops does go for the Trick Room. Mamo in a awkward spot because we can go for the geyser uh, did we go for the geyser into dusclops here because we've got the rain up we're going to do a heck of a lot of damage and we can just giga drain into into the mammal 
was a better getting our resonance up while we got the opportunity to because if we take this down then it does pave the way for the dustman and crossman to come in but then again it's not going to take lapras down so i think lapras is in still a safe enough spot where we're going to be able to um get our resonance up our last turn and getting some nice big juicy damage onto this dustclops is is really going to be uh quite useful for us because what's it go for here haze maybe nah just a nightshade into comfy okay that's fine the guys are how much damage is this going to do i'm kind of interested to know with a weakness policy especially with the rain up it's enough okay well that deals with that issue um i had a feeling it would do a lot but i didn't know if it was going to be enough to get the uh the knockout now a lot of dust clops in this format as well kind of tend to be a bit more on the, the defensive side rather than the special um and tapu finny coming in okay what's it going to be dusk man has to be yeah okay we have to go for the resonance now which is yeah it's kind of come back to bite us a little bit because we're not going to get the most out of our max turns but the the resonance is going to be so much more valuable to us uh going forward we'll go into the dusk main um do we keep comfy around uh or do we just go for hmm i mean we could we could ally switch just to be annoying because i think the dust man pro yeah let's just ally switch let's be that let's be that guy um okay cancelled that's a sad 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 way to end this first one today but good game to my opponent i still think they could have like probably done something there it would have been very difficult from that point but um okay well yeah it just shows as well you know series eight if you get the leads wrong in these matches it's so punishing and the matchup the, the matchups don't help as well it makes it it's it's a complicated format which uh, makes it difficult anyway good game to my opponent let's jump straight into our next one of the episode okay next up today we have a rillaboo mindshow entai tornadoes azashian and dragapult really interesting build to be honest got lots of fake out support between the mindshow and the rillaboom uh helps tailwind support set up from that tornadoes taunt abuse as well um entai is an interesting one here but um it's going to be difficult to deal with uh, whatever win obviously the the threat of the um sacred fire especially onto something like zygod always going to be kind of prevalent thunderous doesn't feel very good for us here um i mean it does well against stuff like the mind shell and, and the rillaboom but like outside of that the risk of sacred fire burns um make it very difficult and also the dragapult could be kind of more supporting as well with something like will-o-wisp that makes it a little bit more tricky to uh to utilize right 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 i think incineroar is like super super important for us here we can't really get the most out of the intimidate onto the mind shell or the entai but i think trick room is going to be like the key to uh us being able to kind of do something although it's difficult because the double fake out makes it tricky now what do we bring as our last one like do we go down a lapras route or maybe rillaboom uh, probably lapras you know and then we at least we've got the kind of flexibility between going either zygote or lapras as our max it's just gonna be tough against his ashen you know whereas i got is obviously the the better option as long as they don't have like play rough or something uh, which you can never discount because it is always an option um you know a lot of japanese players kind of had kind of opted for that in the uh, the players cup four qualifiers i noticed on the usage stat so it's not something that's like entirely gone away but uh, something just to keep in mind okay yain shell and the dragapult can't intimidate and not in the best of spots because we either get taunt off the mind shell or we get yeah, we all we get taunted or we get faked out here. We can't fake out the mind shell. I think do we just allow Comfy to kind of sit in here and try the trick room, and then do we just parting shot? I think we parting shot out into the mind shell. It could go for close combat here, which is not ideal into um, Incineroar. Um, but the Dragapult maxing. 
Okay. Is it life orb pult? Could be. Come for those airstreams. And I, I, you know, it makes sense to go like fake out and then airstream into the comfy. It puts you in a, in a good spot going into turn two, but. Oh, it's weakness policy pult. <laughs> okay, that's not ideal. That really is not ideal. Brutal swing, it didn't see coming out. Oh, that's nasty. That is nasty. Can we take this? Oh, we do. We do. We take it. Just, just comfy coming in. Clutch there. Going to allow us to get a trick room up. Now we have to make the decision, you know, who do we want on the field? Do we want something like Lapras or do we want uh, Zygod? I think Lapras is probably the better option. And like in on like all honesty, Lapras is going to be the best option here because we've got the, the ability now to go max Giga Drain and then just nuke the Dragapult, which and get our resonance up at the same time. And that should put us in a good spot. The the other thing to think about here is potentially go after the the mind shower because the Dragapult could go for Max Guard here in like a horrendous position. So we could go Resonance and Giga Drain into the Mind Show, expecting the Dragapult to max guard uh, in the Mind Show to, to kind of get it like a close combat off into Lapras, you know? I think that's not a bad idea. It's just risky because I think the thing is going for this play right now, it means if the Comfy goes down, then we don't get, uh, like, we haven't got that kind of free way to, to activate our weakness policy, which it makes Lapras a little less impactful, let's say. But I, I just feel strongly that that's going to be what my opponent does. Stall out a turn in this trick room. You don't lose your Dragapult straight away. Um, there we go. Okay, okay. I feel better about this now. And then we can, you know, the Mind Chow is one of those Pokemon that generally has a Sash. Um, and this, th at least this way, it allows us to get rid of it and have a few more options going into the next turn, um, especially to activate our weakness policy now with the resonance up. So, whew. okay, okay, that's that's a bit easier now. Um, it's always iffy gone for those players, you know, and then you see your opponent not max guard, and you're like, oh. <laughs> but it will happen. They're always 50-50s at the end of the day. You just got to make a kind of educated guess. And the worst case scenario there is we get our resonance up. We take the mind share down, but we take some big, big damage. We probably lose comfy to the drag dragon pole. Okay. Zashin coming in now. Now this... I want to get rid of the dragon pole. We got to get rid of the dragon pole, right? Got to get rid of it. Got to get rid of it. I mean, we got a we got a, a screens up, right? We got to get rid of the Dragapult. I think we chase down the Dragapult now. Now the thing is here, does my opponent switch the Dragapult out? Nah, they don't. Okay, and we still got Incineroar on the back where we can bring in and at least get an Intimidate onto the Zash in the next turn. Weakness policy boosted. We should get the Dragapult here. Which we do. Which is good. So we're really taking advantage of these trick room turns and, and, and making some waves here, building that momentum. Now we either take some big damage with Lapras, which I don't mind because we can floor heal and that off the next turn or we lose Comfy. And I imagine you go after the Lapras here. Yeah. Okay. Whew. So much damage. So much damage. So much damage. It's ridiculous. But we still got Zygod kicking around, you know? Um... What's the last Pokemon? Gonna be Tornadus. Okay. Ha. Huh. All right. Well. Um. I think what we do is, do we eye switch here? Because then we can just get some big damage onto. We can get ally switch, and then go Geyser. Like Zashin's like the most likely to protect here, but again, at the same time. We get so punished if it doesn't. And it's just nice to be able to get damage onto it now. Although. It would be useful to get rid of the Tornadus. No. We'll go after the Zashin. 
we'll go after the Zashin. Yeah, we'll go for it. So there's the old cheeky ally switch. Let's see what they do. Do we get punished for this or not? There's a taunt. Okay, so that's fine. That's fine. Don't mind this too much. No protect from the Zashin. So I don't know if this is going to be... A ch hmm. It's always tricky to say with Zashin because it's such a bulky Pokemon. Okay, we do take it down and then that is just the game now because Tornado is not going to be able to, to deal with four Pokemon by itself, unfortunately. Not the kind of Pokemon that you want. Out is your last one. Um, and Comfy going to be able to go for that Floor Heal in this next turn. Uh, and a Freeze Dry or a Thunder should be enough to get the Tornado. So that's kind of like a clean sweep. It's probably one of the, the you know, as a Lapras player, it's probably one of the better kind of ways to see the team kind of function, you know. It functions super well. And we do see the forfeit from my opponent. So we pick up a nice another win. Um, and they're two quick games that we've had. So I think we've probably got time for one more with this team. So we'll jump in, see what we can do with maybe the Zygote in the last one. Because it's been a bit uh, Lapras-centric so far. Okay, next up today we have Andy playing a team of Xerneas, Incineroar, Urshifu, Metagross, Ndidi, and Dragapult. So it's going to be your kind of Xerneas team. Got the support and options like Incineroar for that fake out support to help get the Geomancy off. And then you got Ndidi as well, which really helps out with that redirection. Potentially a support Dragapult with like ally switch and the such you know uh, Will-O-Wisp as well to kind of help out against the physical threats that um, Xerneas doesn't like to see. This is going to be tricky for us because you know Trick Room is great for us of course and Zygarde great in a Trick Room as well. The problem is we don't really have the Steel type that allows us to deal with uh, Xerneas super effectively you know. Um uh, this is this is gonna be this is really this is actually gonna be difficult, you know. Um I think Trick Room definitely are kind of route to success here. It's just how we like and I think we bring both Zygarde and Lapras. Okay. Let's go comfy. Lapras. Let's go Incineroar and Zygarde, I think. Or is Rillaboom gonna be good? Just to overwrite the terrain. Um, let's go Zygarde. I don't know. Like Rillaboom always feels like it's a good Pokemon to bring. Because you can chip Xerneas down to a certain point. And then Grassy Glide's always going to be a reliable way to kind of clean it up. After it's like done maxing or whatever. And what you want to try and tend to do against Xerneas is get that big damage onto it. Because there's so many things in the format that are faster than it. Um... And we could have went down maybe a thunderous route here, but I don't know. I don't know if it's going to really help us too much. Uh, I think getting the trick room up and getting our screens up is going to be way more valuable to us uh, going forward in this match. Um, so we'll have to see what we can do. I feel like we're gonna we've got an easy way to set a trick room up with Ndidi and Xerneas coming out for my opponent. Um, got to go for that resonance into the zone. And get a trick room up. And we've got to hope that we can get rid of the Ndidi pretty swiftly. Because I think the longer it sits on the field, the more space that, that Xerneas is going to have. And it, it just becomes more and more difficult, you know. Especially if it gets a Geomancia, which we can't deny here. It's going to be able to. Um, and the plus two attacks when it's maxed are just disgusting, you know. There's the fallen me. Yep, makes sense. This is about getting this ja the damage that we need to onto the the DD now. There's a Geomancy. <sighs> mm. And you know, a lot of teams in Series Eight just aren't really set up to uh, to to tackle Xerneas that well because it's just not as prominent a threat. So you're seeing holes in teams against this sort of Pokemon. So when you come up against them. It becomes very difficult because you don't have that kind of instant way to deal with it. Uh, and you've got to be kind of... You've got to just... God, that's not going to be enough to go down the next turn, is it? Nope. Um, <laughs> Do we go? Okay, well, we get a trick room up, which definitely helps. Um, we probably want to get our... I think, yeah, we want to get the rain up. I'm going to go after the Xerneas again. Um, and I'm going to have to try and get the weakness policy proc'd. 
Don't see a follow me. Or do we? we? I know we go up before, so we may still see a follow me. Because uh, of the triage ability. It has that... Yeah, it has that additional priority bracket. But interesting to see the Xerneas not actually max here. Um, that was my opponent kind of waiting a turn to max it and stall out our max turns, which makes a lot of sense, you know, get some initial damage onto the field now. I don't think a Dazzle is going to take down either Comfy or Lapras. Let's say that. Yeah, and I mean, we take it pretty comfortably. We've got the ability to go for a Floor Heal next turn onto the Lapras and, and try and smack that, that Xerneas as hard as we can with a plus two. Rain boosted Max Geyser, which is not going to be enough, especially if we do see it max. Ah, tricky. Now the Metagross hitting the field. What's Metagross got? It's got Bullet Punch, I would imagine. 100% got Bullet Punch. We'll go after the Xerneas though, like we planned. We'll go for that Floral Heal into Lapras. Just gives it a little bit more stability, I guess, going into these next few turns. Be interested to see if the, the Metagross is the Pokemon that my opponent decides to max. I can't see it though. I think when you're this kind of far into a game and you've managed to get your Geomancy up, you're unscathed. It makes more sense to max the Zern. But that's that's a heavy ball I'm seeing, so maybe it is the Metagross. It is the Metagross! It makes me happier seeing that. I think it's easier to deal with Xerneas when it's not maxed. Um, and not Bullet Punch, so we'll get... Yeah, I mean, probably Max Quake's the best option. Xerneas protects, okay. And that's fine. Because <sighs> it's just about now, trying to get the damage onto the Xerneas, so something like Zygarde could potentially come in. But you've got to be very careful. Hmm, Max Hailstorm, is this even going to be enough? No. That seems strange. That seems an odd... I mean, you get rid of the rain, for sure. Yeah, right, you get rid of the rain. Makes a lot of sense in that respect. But at the same time, you're not, you know... Not get rid of it. It kind of locking you in to make sure that you uh, you have to go for Max Hailstorm the next turn as well. Um, just so that the Hydro Pump isn't supercharged. Okay, well, Comfy. We're going to see a Dazzle. I don't know if we see Dazzle this next turn, I think. <laughs> Ally Switch feels a bit redundant. And I don't really want to switch anything in at this point, you know? We've got to keep in mind as well, we only got two turns of Trick Room left. Is it worth... What is it worth? What is it worth? Do we just try and get some damage onto the Zerny? So Giga Drain's not going to do much at all. Oh, the Psychic Terrain's up! What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Okay, well, yeah. Okay. Quake coming into Lapras. Still doing a hefty chunk, you know? Uh, oh my god, what have we done? What have we done here? And the problem is with Zygarde as well coming onto the field. It's not going to be... It's not going to enjoy... Is that a crit? Oh, that's that's really unfortunate for my opponent. Uh, that is... That's really unfortunate for my opponent. Because, you know, I think you take down Comfy there. You chunk Lapras again. You've got one more turn of Trick Room. Like, there's no way we take out... There is no way we take out Xerneas there. Um, I think we go for uh, yeah this match just got uh, came a lot easier I think um, I mean we could double into Urshifu here it's probably not a bad idea oh, we can't we can't because of the psychic train let's let's be mindful of our last turn where we messed up we'll go for a floral healing we may end up losing Lapras here to a double up from the Urshifu uh, but it does protect okay that makes sense See how these last turns of uh, of Trick Room. Mm, see what this Metagross goes for. Probably more likely go for another Max Quake, I think, into Lapras. It's Steel Spike, and it's into Comfy. Okay, so Lapras sitting full health, which isn't too bad. We get Incineroar in the field next. Um, the Intimidate's not going to help us out a bunch, right? But we do have Fake Out, and the Psychic Train should end this next turn as well. So it does mean that we're going to be able to use those priority attacks. Unlike a couple of turns ago where we tried to get a random Giga Drain into the air. Uh, the Xerneas. Um, Alright. 
our Aurora Veil ends, Trick Room ends, and the weirdness disappears. But we do have a way to... Because now I think if it comes down to Metagross, uh, it's not so simple, you know. It's not so simple as saying if it comes down to Metagross versus Zygarde. Because of the Ice Punch that they've got, it makes it very difficult to kind of say, okay, well, yeah, we, we kind of have this match, of course. But I think the thing that you've got to think of right now is that Metagross probably isn't the best suited to deal with Lapras. So we've got that going for us. Uh, let's go freeze dry into Urshifu. Let's go for a fake out as well. I think it's it, like the Hydro Pump makes more sense here. And for the double protect, doesn't get it. Um, if it's sashed, we should be able to get it this, this turn. But I don't want to risk a Hydro Pump just to, to miss here. You know, when the freeze dry is just more than enough with the plus two. So, Metagross gone Earthquake. It's not Slump Enchantrum. Okay, that makes it a bit more a bit more manageable, I guess. Um, but now we are relying. We either go for a Thunder or a Hydro Pump. I think we risk the Hydro Pump here. And... Um, The thing is, Zygod's going to be faster than Metagross, so it doesn't really matter if we proc a weakness policy here, and we do see the battle cancelled. I think the big takeaway there was how lucky we got uh, with the crit on the Xerneas. I think it would have been a completely different match if we didn't get that, and I don't know if we would have been able to win that one. Good games, Andy. Uh, I hope there's no hard feelings, but um, yeah. We've had three nice games today, peeps. So let's jump over and remind you all of the rental code from today's team. Okay, friends, here is the rental team from Lava Lamp. Uh, and a big shout out to uh, to Ian again for providing us a team. Do drop them, uh, a, 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 at least check out their channel um, and have a look at their content. Do provide some support. It's always nice to support these new uh, poker tubers when they're coming up and trying to do content like this because it's always nice to go and see and have content to watch. So if you do enjoy it, uh, you've enjoyed the team, definitely drop over and uh, check Ian's channel out and um, hope you enjoy the team if you do try it out it's nice to feature Zygarde and always uh, always excited to feature GMAX Lapras one of my favorite Pokemon in Sword and Shield so I hope you've enjoyed the team today it's really unique we didn't really get to see too much of the Thunderous but I, I don't mind that too much we've seen a lot of thunderous in series eight we know what it's all about and it does a very good job anyway so it's nice to kind of feature a little bit more of the zygod which we probably didn't see enough of today it was more the lapras kind of show but it just goes to show how good a pokemon it is and how good it probably will be going into series nine as well so it's always a threat to kind of consider especially when you haven't got these restricted kind of making it more difficult to utilize some of these pokemon that have been a little bit suppressed in series eight but Thank you, as always, for tuning in to today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, we'll be back again very soon with another episode with another team in Series 8. Take care of yourselves, friends, and I'll catch you all for another episode soon. Bye-bye!